Let's get into now what I consider a huge part of the course, and that's how to do bulk load optimizations and bulk loading. Okay, so this, this may seem like a fairly small job. You just need to load a text file into SQL Server. But for many people, this is their whole life as a SQL Server developer or as a SQL Server integration services developer or DBA. They just strictly work with this all the time. This is critical business functions for their company, and it's extremely important that you understand how this all works. So if you're new to SSIS, uh, or if you're just kind of getting started with SSIS, but you've been around DTS or some of the other tools, this is big stuff. So pay attention. I think it's big stuff out there. So we're going to talk in this video about what the options are for doing bulk loads. And we're going to, over the next three, four, five videos, whatever it ends up being, we're going to develop your knowledge of bulk loads and when you would use each particular method and how they're different and what the options are and what the options mean. We're going to really dig down deep with this one here. So you can see we're kind of working our way through chapter six here. Um, many times, just to make sure you kind of understand, this is used in conjunction with what we've already gone through in the chapter. You've got a whole folder full of text files that you need to load up. Awesome. Combine the techniques here. Uh, okay, so let's talk about what bulk loading is. Nothing too fancy. You've got text files that have rows of data and you simply need to move them from source to destination, right? So your ETL process, except you're really not going to do the transform. You're going to extract from the thread from the text file. You're going to take the rows out of the text file and you're loading them into the destination. And in this particular example, in this particular set, we're specifically talking about going into SQL Server. Now, you might be using Oracle as your destination, DB2, Informix, whatever. That's cool. We're not going to change it that much. But I'm going to show you what, for an SSIS developer, is the most likely real-world scenario, and that's loading into SQL Server tables. So here are the tasks that can perform our function. So every one of these five tasks have some way that we can take the data from a text file, take the rows that are in a text file, and load them into SQL Server. So we have to then figure out which one to use when, or what the differences are between them, or which one offers more features than another, or which one is the most difficult to implement, or <laughs> which one is the most difficult to maintain over time. Right? I mean, those are all little pieces that you have to deal with. So let's take a look at each one of these, because there are a couple of different options within a few of them. So let's talk about first the data flow task. Okay, so the data flow task as an option, we could use a flat file source and a OLEDB destination. Okay, a flat file source would be our text file, right? And we're going to load it into a SQL Server table. And we will create an OLEDB destination that is in the data flow, the OLEDB destination. Are you, are you clear about what I'm talking about? I mean that we're in a data flow task inside of integration services. We go to the data transformations, data sources, uh, data destinations little tool tab in the toolbox, and we drag an OLEDB destination onto the surface, and that's where we send it. Okay. Another option, using a SQL Server destination. Okay, They're all going to be flat file sources here. Okay, so you have these as two choices. They do the same thing. My OLEDB destination works, it can load the data, or I have an optimized for SQL Server OLEDB destination called a SQL Server destination. Okay. Now, we talked in Chapter 4 about this idea of fast parse. So I'm going to give you a little quick idea early on in this little section here. Fast parse rocks. It can really save you a lot of time provided you're using your SQL Server destination and you're dealing with data that the fast parse can operate over. 
And if you remember from chapter 4, it might be worth reviewing that information, but if you remember, we're typically dealing with numbers and dates when we're working with fast parse. Okay? Not strings, generally numbers and dates. So if I have a text file loaded with numeric data, I can probably get a little speed using the fast parse. I'm going to show you how to do it. Okay? But chapter 4 is going to go through the details. I'm going to just assume you already understand chapter 4 when we get into it. Now, the execute SQL task, let's focus on that one. There is a bulk insert statement in the Transact SQL language that can take data from a text file, load it into a SQL Server table. There is also, in SQL Server 2005 and higher, the open row set function with the bulk option that allows us to do the exact same thing. We can write a select statement around our text file. You see, the difference between the bulk insert and the open row set is that with open row set, it's part of a select. So I say select all from open row set, and I use the open row set to load my text file, and that in turn populates my table. So bulk insert, you can, equivalate, or you can make that equivalent to the bulk insert task. They're going to probably be the exact same in terms of performance. Now, there are a couple of other options. There is the SQL bulk copy class that if you are using .NET to perform your loads, you could do that in a script task inside of SSIS. Generally speaking, this would be a bad idea. Uh, most of the time you use the SQL bulk copy class, it's when you have a standalone .NET application, not using it inside of SSIS. Then you could also use the execute process task to execute the command line bcp.exe. Probably another bad idea, unless you're dealing with legacy code that you just had ported over from DTS and don't want to change. Uh, the BCP is probably going to perform slower than the other options that we've already seen. And so that really leaves it to the bulk insert task or some way to work with the data flow task, or some way to do the execute SQL task. Okay, so these other options you probably do not want to use. We want to focus on the data flow task, the bulk insert task, or the T-SQL ways using the execute SQL task. Okay. Now you could, and I, I would be remiss if I didn't mention this, you could perform the bulk load outside of SSIS together, altogether. You could have an application that runs a job nightly that creates or populates this data. Okay, well then why are we in an SSIS class? <laughs> okay, so you could do it. You'd probably be using some sort of a, a SQL bulk copy class in .NET or some other thing uh, like that. Okay, so you got a basic idea of the options. Now, let's talk about optimizing these. So we're going to take a look in the next video about how to optimize what we're given.